What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com back with another SketchUp and layout tutorial for you. So this is part two in my series on creating a tiny house model for layout inside of SketchUp. I will link to a playlist containing all of the parts of this video in the notes down below. Um, so we've already done part one where we created the floor plan. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add our doors and windows. If you're looking for more great layout resources, make sure you check out my layout resources page at the sketchpotentials.com slash layout. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you remember last week, what we did is we came in and we started by modeling out our walls. And so we've modeled out our exterior and interior walls, and then our floor group is grouped as well. And so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna come in and we're gonna add doors and frames to these openings. And if you remember, what's really important in layout is staying organized. So like for example, my exterior walls are on their own layer, my interior walls are on their own layer, my floor is on its own layer, and all of those are contained in different groups which you can see that we're using the groups or the group containers um, in order to set those layers. And we'll talk more about that in a second. So what I want to do first is I want to start off and I want to add my doors. So in this case, I have two doors in this model. And so what we need to do to start off is we need to start and we're just going to draw a rectangle across this in order to start drawing our door. And so our door is really going to have three pieces to it. It's going to have the frame, it's going to have the door leaf itself, and it's also going to have a door swing, which is what we're going to use in layout to indicate um, where the door is going to swing open. So to start off, what I've done is I've gone in here and I've drawn a rectangle inside of this door opening. And uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to double click on this to select it and I'm going to make it a group. And so when I make it a group, you can see how my group is going to show up in my outliner. And I'm going to go ahead for right now, and I'm just going to call this um, front door. And so now we're just going to double click inside of this in order to edit this. So what I want to do first is I want to create my frame. So I'm just going to use the offset tool to offset this by something like two inches or whatever your thickness of your door frame is going to be. And then I'm just going to move this line here that's created down. And what that's going to do is that's going to merge this line with the bottom line so that my frame is in here as its own geometry. And so what I want to do now is I want to double click on my frame. And you don't have to put your frames in their own groups, but I'm going to go ahead and do that for right now. I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to make that a group. And so you can see how now in my door group, I now have a group inside of the group. And we're going to rename this by right clicking on it and clicking rename. And we're just going to call this frame. And so I'm going to take my frame and I'm going to extrude it so that it's as thick as this wall. And I've found that using x-ray mode is very helpful for this because it allows you to see the back side of your wall. So it gives you something to kind of inference to when you're push pulling this. And so I'm just going to come in here and I'm just going to push pull this back to this back wall. And if you find that this is extruding back into itself and it's deleting this front face, you can tap the control key in order to put this in create new face mode so that this doesn't come in as like a hollow shape. And so now if I turn my x-ray mode back off, you can see how I have a frame that's gone all the way through this wall. And I can go ahead and I can right click on this and I can reverse this face so that the proper face is facing outward. And so now if I was to come in here and delete out this door leaf um, just for a second, you can see how I have my door in here. The other thing you might do is you might erase out this extra line. So we have our frame in here. Now what we want to do is we want to go inside our door group and we want to actually model our door. And so to model my door, I'm going to use the rectangle tool and just draw a rectangle across the back here like this. And then I'm going to push pull this to whatever thickness um, your door is going to be. So in this case, I'm just going to make it half of this wall width. Um, a lot of the time you might pick something like, or in fact, I'm just going to push pull it forward and I'm going to give it a thickness of two inches. And so you'll notice I've made a mistake here because I've already drawn this door leaf and uh, it's outside of my group. But I'm going to show you a quick trick in order to move that back into your group. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to push pull this to a thickness of 
two inches. And in fact, even before that, I'm just gonna double click on this and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make this a group. And so this group is gonna be my door leaf. And so I'm just gonna call this door leaf. And so now you can see how I have this group that's kind of sitting around out here. And then I also have my group in here for my front door. Well, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag this door leaf group into front door. And so you can see how now door leaf is contained inside this door group. So if you ever accidentally create something that's outside of this group, you can just drag it in using the outliner. That's one of the big benefits of the outliner. And so I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna push pull this to a thickness of two inches. So you can see how when I push pull that to a thickness of two inches, I now have a door leaf in here. And you could make this as decorative as you want. If your front door is gonna be more decorative or have like a window or something like that, you can model that in here as well. For right now, I'm just gonna leave this as is. We may come back in and add like a casing or something like that, but we're not gonna do that quite yet. Um, so for now, what we have is we have our front door and our frame. And so if we were to take a section cut through this, which is how we're gonna create our floor plan, you can see how if I look at this straight up and down, and perspective mode is on, so this looks a little weird, but you can see how this is gonna show up with your door frame and your door leaf in here, which is how we want things to look. So if I turn off perspective mode by going to parallel projection, you can see how this gives me the straight up and down view that I want. That's going to be how we're going to create our door look inside of our model. And so now I'm just going to go back. I'm going to delete out that section cut for right now. And then the last thing I'm going to do with this door, I'm going to turn perspective view back on, is I'm also going to add a group in here for the door swing. And so the door swing is going to have whatever the length of your door is. So in this case, that's two foot eight inches. So I'm going to go inside my front door group and I'm gonna draw a two foot eight inch line. I'm gonna draw a two inch line and then I'll just use the rectangle tool to make this a rectangle. And I'm also gonna reverse the faces on this one, but you can see how what this has done is this has kind of given me a door swing in here. And the other thing you might do is you might use the arc tool so in this case, I'm going up to the drop down and selecting the first option for arc tool. What that's really good for is drawing a door swing arc like this one. And so what you may have to do um, in order to get this swing to fit from here to here properly is just use the scale tool to scale, scale it out a little bit until it kind of lines up with that final edge. And then we're just gonna double click on this we're gonna do a shift click to select this, to select both of these, and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna make those a group. And in this case, for those, I'm gonna call this door swing. So now, we have a front door in here with a door leaf, a door swing, and a door frame. And so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna create a layer that all of our doors are going to go on. So we're just gonna click the plus button and we're just gonna add a layer. We're gonna call it arch dash doors okay and we'll put the doors on this as an, in a second when I create my second door I'm going to group them together and then I'll have an overall container that I can use um, to put all these doors on so we'll talk about that in a second but I'm also going to take this swing and I'm going to create a layer and in this case instead of an ARCH for architectural this is going to be a CONC it's a conceptual layer meaning it's a layer that has things that kind of show different visibilities but you want to be able to turn that on and off separately so in this case I'm going to call this CONC dash door swings and so now if I take that door swing group and I put that on the door swings layer, that means I can turn door swings on and off while leaving my doors on. And so now what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna model out another door in this opening right here. And one thing that may make this easier is if you go in and turn off your exterior walls group for a second. So I'm gonna model this out in the same way. I'm probably gonna speed this up because this video will get really long otherwise. Then we'll come back and talk about it. And one thing real quick about this door is it's a little bit too narrow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hide this and then I'm gonna go in here and I'm actually going to adjust this wall by pushing this opening back three inches and pushing this opening back three inches. And we're actually gonna resize our door um, because that was a smaller opening than I thought it would be. So I'm just gonna go back and I'm gonna unhide. And 
when I double click in this, you can see how this is all raw geometry um, inside this group. So all I have to do is just kind of select the edge like this and I can move it out in order to widen my door. And so that door looks a little better. Okay, so now I'm going to turn my exterior walls back on just so we can kind of look at this. So you can see how right now what we have is we have a pair of doors in here. And so what I want to do is I want to do the same thing we did with our walls where I'm going to take this front door and this inside door. I'm going to select them both and I'm going to right click on them and I'm going to make them a group. And so in this case, we're going to call this group doors. And so what that allows us to do is now we can take this doors group, the overall container, and we're going to put this on the ARCH doors layer that we created. So what that allows us to do is turn that doors layer on and off. And so one thing to notice about this is you can see how since even the swings are inside this doors group that we created that's acting as an overall container for the doors, that means if we turn the doors layer off, then your swings turn off as well. But then if you remember, each one of these doors also has a door swing group in it that we've put on the door swings layer. So what that means is if we go in and turn the CONC dash door swings on and off, we can use this for visualization. Um, but then we also have the swings in there if we want them. So this, this allows us to go in and make changes. You saw how I was able to make a change to the width of this door, for example, really easily. So now we're just gonna do the same thing with our windows. And so probably what we're gonna do for these windows is something very similar. So I'm just gonna model each one of these in as a group, and then we can take this group and group the whole thing in a windows group that we're gonna use as the container for our windows. And so what I would do in this case is I would draw a rectangle across this window, and I would offset this in whatever the thickness of that frame is gonna be. And then in this case, I would assume probably that this is going to be um, a slider because this is more of a residential window. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put Push, pull this frame out and I'm going to delete this face and probably what I would do in this case is I would make this a group to start off with and uh, I would call this probably window and I would mention whatever the size of it is so I would do a rename and this would be window dash um, in this case it's four foot by three foot And so inside of this, I would take this frame and I would make this a group um, just because we don't want this merging with the rest of the geometry. And you can kind of group this however you want to, but I usually think that's a good idea. And then inside of that, probably what I would do is I would make each one of the sliders a component because they're going to be a repeating copy of the same thing. So I would take this slider, I would offset this in two inches. I'm going to turn my wall layers on and off because they're kind of in the way. And then I would push pull this to about halfway through. So what I would do here is I would triple click on this. And remember, because we're going to create a copy of this, we want to make this a component, not a group. So I would right click on this and I would click make component. And I am going to go ahead and I'm going to call this slider frame. And I'm going to hit enter. And so what that means is now I can take this object and I can make a copy of it on the inside. So I use the move tool in copy mode in order to do this. And then on the inside of that, I would create a component called glass pane. And I'm going to make sure this box for uh, replace selection with component is checked, and I'm just going to click create. So I would just push pull this in order to give it a little bit of thickness. So probably, I'm not sure how thick glass is. This may be like a 3 8 or a 5 8 We're going to call it a 5 8 inch piece of glass. And so you can see how we've basically made up our window assembly by doing this. And one more thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to take this window pane or this glass pane. I'm just going to move it back a little bit to give it kind of an inset. So probably I'll just turn on x-ray mode and kind of center it in the middle of the frame itself. So now if I turn x-ray mode back off, you can see how this is a fairly accurate window. And so what I'm going to do just for now for 
for um, visuals is I'm gonna apply a glass material in here just because it's nice to have that kind of visual indicator that these are gonna be glass as you're working. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off and since this window is probably going to also fit in this frame over here, and it's gonna be the same size, what we wanna do is we wanna make this window a component as well. So we've already created the group, so all we have to do is come in here and right click on it and click Make Component. And uh, we're just gonna click Create. And so what that did is that took this window that we've created right here, and that made it a component that we can now copy and put in this other opening. So I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy. And then I'll just use the scale tool in order to flip this. You wanna make sure that you flip this because the outside of this window is gonna be on the other side. So that's gonna be important if we add like a casing or something like that. Um, but you can see how I also have another opening over here that's also gonna be that size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make another copy I'm going to rotate it so it fits in that opening. And then I'm just going to go ahead and place that. So you can see how I have my three windows in here. And before I go any further, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take all of those windows. I'm just going to select them in the outliner. And I'm just going to right click and I'm going to make them a group. And in this case, I'm going to rename this group Windows. And so what we're going to do is the same thing we did before, where we're going to add a layer and call it arch dash windows and we're going to put this group this windows group on the arch dash windows layer so now we can turn our windows on and off and so what we want to do is we want to go inside this group and we want to create one more window component for these single windows so i'm going to do that real quick and i'll probably speed up this part of the video as well All right, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this window and we're gonna make a copy of it to put in this opening. And so now what we have is we have a tiny house building with doors and windows that we can turn on and off in really any format that we want. So we can turn the windows off when we want to. We have the doors set up so we can turn them off. And they're also all grouped, so if you have to resize an opening or something like that, you can do that really quickly. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, we'll continue in another video, probably probably next Monday, talking more about modeling for layout in SketchUp 2019. For now, leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Did you find this helpful? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click Remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.